Hello and welcome to Project Art Now. Today I want to talk about Pi in storytelling. Please do share your thoughts in the comment section. Now it's time to announce the manga of the week, Berser. As always, I do have an art from the manga of the week. Hope you like this guide. Remember, you can get the manga of the week via the link of the description. While you are there, follow me on my socials. I'd love to interact with all of you. Also, take a look at my store where you'll find lots of quality products with plenty of original designs. Finally, if you are into fantasy and science fiction, then you love the Project Sare. Okay, so facts in a story are fun and exciting, or at least they should, but what makes a fight to be a good one? Everyone has their own answer to that question, and I'd love to know yours, please let me know in the comment section. As for my answer, I feel like a good fight is one that gets you excited, even when you already know who's going to win, and when it's over, it was worth your time. Now, this time I'm going to do something I haven't done before, a top 10. For a number 10, we have Goku and Piccolo versus Raditz. You may find this odd. I mean, as far as I know, I am the only one who has included on a top 10 list fight. But I think it's better than people give it credit for. You have Goku teaming up with Piccolo to defeat an imposing threat. There is a strategy and a brand new technique, and it is only the beginning of a new adventure. But the perfect transition from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball C. Number 9, Yugi and Yami Yugi vs Pegasus. Not all fights have to be punching and kicking. A duel of the minds can be just as entertaining as a physical encounter, more so in some cases. Funny thing about this one is the Despite one might think, it's not about who's better at playing dual monsters, but rather who is better at using their millennium item to play dual monsters. Number 8, we have Luke Skywalker vs Darth Vader. While they have two different encounters, I will count them as one fight with two different rounds. I know that's not accurate, but consider this. Round 1, Luke gets way over his head by rushing in fighting Darth Vader. The result was catastrophic, as Luke only managed to survive because Vader didn't want to kill him. However, in what could be considered round 2, Luke has learned his lesson, this time he's prepared and the fight ends differently. So there's clearly a lesson there, but in addition to that, it's an overall cool fight. Number 7, Luffy vs Arlong. Instead of captchas, websites should show this fight from the events that lead to it to its conclusion, and if someone shows no visible emotion whatsoever, then they're clearly a robot. Number 6, Frodo vs Gollum. These fights define the conclusion of the Lord of the Rings epic tale, and it's perfect because there is a second fight that is Frodo versus the ring, and right at the last moment Frodo loses that fight. However, Gollum saves the day, not intentionally of course, as he falls with the ring into the lava. But the irony is that the reason they fought is because the ring's influence on them, so the evil in the ring caused its own destruction. Number 5, Rock Lee versus Gaara. This is a classic, hard work versus natural talent, and while the later won this particular fight, however, the former showed its great value. Furthermore, while from a philosophical standpoint, Point. This fight has enough to be on the list, visually speaking is astonishing. Number 4, Suko vs Azula. The final Agnikai is one of the best moments in all of the Avatar series. It showcases Suko's growth and mental maturity throughout his fire-bending skills. On the other hand, Azula's raw power suffers from her mind essentially going against herself, and while Katara is the one who finally defeats Azula, Suko proves that he is the true Fire Lord. Number 3, Wendy and Chiria vs Dimaria. I probably should have include Ultir, as her assistance in the fight was key. When this fight started, I was really hyped about it, because Wendy is one of my favorite characters in fairy tale, and so watching her on the spotlight is something that I always enjoy, but then something I wasn't expecting happens, and Chiria steals the show, and honestly, I'm not even mad, that was awesome. Number 2, Conan vs Red Sonja. We have a super fit man with a sword, wearing minimum clothing, against a super fit woman with a sword, wearing minimum clothing. Do I need to say more? Okay, I admit I just randomly remembered this fight as I was building this list, and I basically let nostalgia do its thing, but that's not to say the fight doesn't deserve a spot in the list, in fact, by virtue of the nostalgia, it proved to be a worthy fight, at least for me. Honorary mention, Tomb Raider 2018. I absolutely loved every fight in that movie, from the sparing to the most serious ones, and I must admit, it's all because of the rule of cool. For real, as far as fighting in live action goes, this movie offers some of the best. They looked both impossible and realistic at the same time. Unfortunately, that's not enough to have a spot on the list, but it is worth to mention. Number 1, Yusuke Uramechi vs Toguro. This fight has it all, the cool, the nostalgia, the unexpected awesomeness, the growth of one of the characters versus the decline of the other, the philosophical encounter, the battle of the minds and not only bodies, the strategy, all of it and then some. Anyone who wants to include fighting in their story but are struggling to do so, I strongly recommend not only to watch this fight but the entirely dark tournament saga. What do you think of the list? Also, would you like to see more like this? Please let me know. I think you
you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this. And I wish that you all be back next week. Bye-bye.